Hello and welcome to this WISE and Unity tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at how to use WISE to play a sound inside your Unity project. So if you're following along from my previous tutorial where we integrated WISE into Unity, that's fantastic. But if not, that's also totally fine. What you're going to need to do is create a new Unity project and then integrate WISE into it. So once you've done all that, we can get started. So we're actually going to start in WISE and then what we'll need to do is if you see a screen that looks kind of like this, what you're going to need to do first is go up to the Layouts tab and then switch over to Designer. So now once you're in the Designer tab, we're going to go to the Actor Mixer Hierarchy and then right click on the default work unit under that, go to New Child and then Sound SFX. And I'm going to go ahead and call this explosion because that's the sound that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So once you've done that, you'll notice that the text is red and that's because this SFX object actually doesn't have a sound file attached to it yet. So what you'll need to do is go into your sound library and grab a WAV file. So I've got this one right here. And then once you have it, click and drag it from your file browser onto your new object. So this audio file importer screen will come up. Go ahead and hit import and then import again. And then now you'll notice that the color has changed to white. And if it changes to blue, that's also totally fine. That means it's worked just as well. So once you have your explosion object, you can actually hit play on it. So click it and you can hit play and you can hear the file that you just imported. So now what we need to do is actually create an event for this object so that WISE knows that we want to play it. So there are two ways to go about doing this. The first one is the quickest where you can right click, go to new event, and then play and then it automatically names it play underscore explosion. But the other way you can do it is go to the event viewer down here, right click, hit new event, play you can name it whatever you'd like and then it'll bring you to this screen right here and you will have to drag your sound sfx object onto the target because this will be empty but those are the two ways to go about doing that and the reason that this event editor right here is very very nice is because it allows you to actually put multiple sound sfx objects into a singular event so say for example you have a shotgun sound and you wanted there to be a shooting sound and then also the sound of the shell hitting the ground. What you could do is put both of those into this event. So you can see I'll actually can put two explosions into the same event and then delay it by maybe a second. So if I hit play now, you see it played the explosion twice. So this is a very easy way of putting multiple sounds into one object so you don't have to call them all individually through code. And it gives you a lot of options for things that you can do and allows you to be creative much more easily without having to worry about the technical aspect of things. But that will be for a later tutorial. So for this, once you have your sound SFX object and your play event for that, what we now need to do is create a sound bank. So if you're here from the previous tutorial, then you probably already have a sound bank. But if you don't, that's totally fine. Just go up to layouts and then the sound bank layout. And you'll have something that looks probably like this. So I already have a sound bank, but if you don't, that's totally fine. What you'll need to do is hit new and then down in the name, name it whatever you'd like. I called mine main sound bank then hit OK. I'm going to hit Cancel because I already have my sound bank. So then once you hit this little drop down here, you should have a sound bank listed right here. So what you'll need to do now is select the sound bank that you just created and then drag your play explosion event from the event viewer to this hierarchy inclusion. So I'm going to drag my event into there. And once again, the reason that we do this is that you can have multiple sound banks and most uh, major games, especially larger games, definitely do. And so you could have a vehicle sound bank, you could have a player 
uh, gunfire sound bank, uh, and anything that you might need so that you can load and unload sound banks as you need them. That way you can save on memory and make the performance of your game much, much better. So once your event is in the hierarchy inclusion section of your sound bank, make sure that you have the default work unit selected and your sound bank selected. The platform you want to generate for, so I'm going to go ahead and select Windows and then my language as English, and hit Generate Selected. You can go ahead and hit Generate All as well if you just want to generate for every possible platform. So once you've done that, you shouldn't have any errors. You can go ahead and hit close. And now I'm going to save my WISE project. You can hit Control S or go to File, Save. And then we are ready to move into Unity. So open up your Unity project. And I'll tell you right now that I have gone ahead and added the standard assets to my project ahead of time. And the reason that I've done this is because we're going to be using the first person controller from that. So what you can do if you don't know how to get those is go to the asset store. And if you don't have this tab, just go to window and then asset store right here. And then that should open up and then search for standard assets. So once you've searched for that, It'll show up like this. It's from Unity Technologies. It's completely free. If you don't have it downloaded already, it'll ask you to download it, and then you can import it into your project. So I've already gone ahead and done that, and if you haven't, go ahead and take a minute to do that. So once you're done importing your standard assets into the project, we can now set up our scene. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add a floor. So we're going to go to 3D Object, Let's just make a plane and we can make it say, I don't know, five by five. That's a pretty decent size. Then what we'll need to do is add the emitter that we're going to want to use. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing, 3D object. And for this, we'll use a cube. And we'll go ahead and raise it above our floor. Let's say make that two. And now what we're going to need to do is the way we'll be playing the sound is through a trigger. So this cube comes with a box collider that when we hit this is trigger right here and select it, it will no longer collide with anything. And now is checking for any objects that are uh, crossing the boundaries of this collider. So we'll make it a little bit bigger. We can make it say five by five and make sure that this emitter that you're making and the collider that you have is not going to be touching the floor because what we're going to be doing, I'll show you in just a second, is adding uh, the way we're going to be triggering the sound. So if this collider is say down here and touching the floor, it's going to detect collision and play our sound immediately rather than when our player, you, walks into the collider. So once you've got is trigger selected and made sure your emitter is above the ground, go to add component. We're going to do AK ambient. And you'll notice that it adds an AK game object. Don't worry about that for the moment. We'll talk about that in a future tutorial. Right now, all you need to worry about is this AK ambient component right here. So it's triggering on start. What we're going to want to do is change that to AK collision, or excuse me, AK trigger collision enter right here, AK trigger collision enter. And you'll notice that it says mixed now. And it's because when you select a new one, it doesn't deselect the old option because you can have multiple. So what we're going to do is deselect start. And actually what we're going to want to do is you can use AK trigger collision enter or you can just use AK trigger enter. AK trigger collision enter detects for both a trigger or a collision. So either one of these will work. So I'm actually gonna switch mine to just AK trigger enter. So now once we've done that, we actually need to tell our AK ambient component what sound we want to play. So under the name, go to our this selection right here and you can select your play event. So now, once we've done all that, the last thing that we need to do is, well, there are actually a couple more things we need to do. First, let's go ahead and put our player into the game. So you should now have a standard assets folder. So go into that, go to characters, 
first person, prefabs, and FPS controller. And then you can click and drag that into your scene. And I'm going to lift it above the floor a little bit so it doesn't clip when we hit play. The next thing you're going to want to do, which is also important, is delete your main camera now because our FPS controller already comes with a player or excuse me, a camera attached and we don't want those two cameras competing for control. So lastly, what we're going to need to do is tell Unity that we want to load the sound bank that we created in WISE and that our event lives in. So this main sound bank right here. So to do that on any object, I'm just going to be doing it on our WISE global for the sake of ease. As you can see, I've already included it, but what you'll do is go to add component, search AK bank, then add this AK bank object, and then you'll get something that looks like this. So you can leave it to load on start and unload on destroy. And then for the name down here, go to the default work unit and select your main sound bank. So once you've done all those things, you should be able to go ahead and save your project and then hit play. So give it a moment just to load up and then you should be able to walk around with your FPS controller and then walk towards your queue and your sound should play as you enter the trigger zone of your cube. So that is the most basic way uh, how to play a sound using WISE in Unity. We'll be going more in depth on a lot of different other things you can do with WISE later, but hopefully that helps and I will see you all in the next one.